Oh, that cute kitty. Hi. Hey guys, I'm Layla. Today we are playing some Raid Shadow Legends and I got a guest with me. This happens to be my friend, Bronze. Bronze, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time coming. Definitely going to be a lot of fun. The last one we recorded on my channel was fun. So uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to this as well. For sure. And guys, I will have some links down below for Broad. Broad streams on Twitch. He also has a YouTube channel. And like he said, he just dropped a video on his YouTube channel as well too. So make sure you go over there, check the video, leave a comment, smash the subscribe button. On your channel, what were we talking about on yours? Oh, we were talking about some of our most wanted... Uh champions in general we talked about a couple mythics a couple legendaries all kinds of fun so uh, go check that out for sure we definitely had a good time there guys so make sure you check his and even drop us some comments on his video about who some of your most wanted are and i'm curious those of you guys have been watching you should know mine but the third one might have thrown you for a curveball so let me know what you think when you check out his video okay guys and of course it's not that, a video if you don't mention honorable mentions either you know yes so uh of course, we had to do the honorable mentions too. And so with oh, yeah. that, on today's video, we're actually going to be talking about game changers. We're going to be talking about champs that made a difference on either like our main accounts or our alt accounts. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So with that being said, drop me some comments down below on who some of your game changer champs are. Like I said, it could be on your, your, you know, your main account, whether you spend money, whether you're free to play, whatever. You're going to see that we have quite a variety of them as well too. And with that said, we're going to start off with Broads since he is the guest. So Broads, where do you want to go for your first game changer? Well, I am going to go with Rector Drath, who Ooh, I believe one. was one of the first epics I pulled on my account. And she is an absolute beast with uh, all that healing, all the veils, mm -hmm. the passive healing, the annoying little hop that she used to do that made things take like 10 minutes it's and uh, all, all kinds of fun stuff. I recall... Back when I was struggling with Fire Knight 18, I think, um, I literally had a team where in Fire Knight 18, the team would almost die other than Rector Drath on mm. the wave two. And she would slowly but surely pick back up my entire team for them to then win. It was a 100% team. It took maybe eight or nine minutes to run. Clearly not a very efficient team, but it worked 100% of the time. So that's what I was yeah. running for a while. She just brought so much healing, so much utility, and allowed me into a lot of content that I probably really wasn't quite built for otherwise because she just is such a great healer. She is. Definitely agree with you. And so I know I've liked, I've seen it myself where there's been like those new player codes where you can have her as like one of your starting ones, which is pretty solid considering those yeah. of us that started like early on, you know, you got Shaman, for example. So, I mean, mm -hmm. she's like well above Shaman as a reviver for sure. Oh, yeah. And I, I believe uh, followers of your Twitch channel know that she can actually campaign farm, too. That, that's actually true. She takes about seven to ten minutes or so. But, yeah, she can campaign farm as well. Well, she got buffed now, so now it's only about three. So yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe six, five, six, something like that. I guess we'll see. Really solid start. So, all right, that was Broad's one. Where I'm going to go for mine is... We're actually going to go to Sill of the Drakes. So what's great with her is we know that she's a free login champ so everyone's gonna get her whether you guys spend money whether you're free to play you're gonna get her and for me i've been playing this game for about four and a half years now and i remember when i was playing you know i was even struggling just even like trying to clear all of dragon trying to clear some of the dungeons and for me like when i got her she was a big deal for me helping out with some of that cc now i have an mmo background so i know like when i throw out cc everybody thinks content creator in the raid realm, I mean crowd control. So CC means crowd control. So we're talking about like stuns, we're talking about sleeps, things like that. So we know that she has an AOE stun. She was solid for me with that. Really was very pivotal in helping me be able to basically like finish and clear some of those dungeons like dragon, for example, and even like tossing up her little heels and stuff too. So I love her. I have her built in Relentless. And I mean, I still use her to this day. Yeah, I love using her. Um, she's uh, surprisingly good in Fire Knight, actually, with mm. that A1 that does the turn meter control and the decreased yep. speed. She is she's great all around. She, I mean, she changed my account a bit, too. Basically, mm. she replaced Rector Drath as the person I brought along. Gotcha. Not because she's a better healer than Rector Drath, because honestly, Rector Drath is a better healer, but because it's a passive, and then the stuns, as you mentioned, then she brings more damage. And honestly, she speeds things up because of the time that, you know, she wasn't doing a little dance, you know, so that certainly didn't help either. So. Yeah, exactly. 
Nice. Yeah, so she definitely was a game changer for me. And like I said, I feel like regardless of whether you spend money or you're free to play, like she's a, definitely a solid champ and everybody gets her too, which is great. So with that, let's go into your next one. Yep, we can stay in Barbarians mm -hmm. there because uh, we're going to talk about High Katoon, which is, of course, a 30-day login champion as well. This is not going to be all login champions, we promise, guys, so don't tune out from this. But yep. uh, it's uh, High Katoon is... I think she gets a bit of a bad rap because Apothecary is so easy and accessible as a rare. Everyone says, get Apothecary, he's the only speed champion you need. Whereas she requires epic books to build. But you only need one book in her A2 to get that to the same three-turn mm -hmm. cooldown. And if you don't, it's a four-turn cooldown for Arena. That's still perfectly fine. She's got a really good speed aura, which is something early in the game is really hard to come by. And speed is such a big deal in Raid. Yeah. Speed can change the game. And she's all about speed. She actually does decent enough damage if you end up building with her a little bit of damage or some damage gets built in there. And her and Syl and pretty much anyone else you want to drag with cures faction wars for you. So it's, it, you know, the two of them are pretty easy to deal with. But uh, for me, High Katoon was my arena speed champion because she was the only speed champion I had on my entire account until I got Arbiter. Yeah. So it was yep. very, very, you know, just uh, very big of a challenge. And so uh, definitely was a uh, fond memories of High Katoon. I maxed her, brought her to six stars and do not regret it at all. I actually, I mean, I agree with you too, is that she's solid for sure. She's one of those, she's definitely not a chicken at all. Like she definitely can carry quite a while because those Arbiter missions can be really rough. And I mean, I still use her too. I mean, she's in my Barbarian Faction Wars. Like she's still mm -hmm. being used to this day, even for me. So I mean, definitely, even though she's an epic and she's a login, and again, she's going to be another one like we talked about everyone's gonna get because she's she's a free one and she's a really good free one too yeah and she can probably stay in your 3v3 teams for quite a yep. long time to come too because you need speed champions it's one of the easier ways to deal with dorina so yeah uh, and she does the job and she does the job and I, I love it. And I love how we were talking Arena with her because this kind of segues into my second game changer. And mine actually happens to be sticking with this conversation happens to be Arbiter. Now, I was very, very lucky on my main account because Arbiter was basically the first Void Legendary I pulled. So I ended up pulling her like, a month in or something so i got so lucky i get talking about kind of how the grind is when you first start raid trying to like get through arena and trying to get through the arbiter missions to clear where i got really lucky and i pulled her and she made a massive difference for me in arena so much and not even just arena because again i mean she has amazing buffs i mean she has speed boost she's got the revives she's great overall and she really helped me to be able to clear quite a bit of content so i felt very 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 fortunate to be able to scoop her up so early and then now obviously i have two because i did finish the the arbiter missions eventually yeah and she's got an underrated heal on that mm -hmm. a3 as well that i think people overlook sometimes the weaken on the a1 if you have enough accuracy she can do some buff stripping with the a2 as well mm -hmm. one of the few four skill champions out there too just uh Got a really good kit. I mean, the fact that she still plays in high-level arena today just is a testament to how good she is. And yeah, just getting her a month in, that's got to be a huge game changer. So that that, that really was. That's why I had to put her on this list because I just got very, very lucky with her. And all right, so we're going to go to your third. And where would you like to go for your third one? Well, I'm going to cheat on my third because, you know, that's oh, what boy. we're going to do on this video. But oh, no. um, my third is actually going to be a pair of champions because Ooh. I pulled them the same weekend and they're paired together. So it is the undead hmm. bride and groom, Rhodos and Siffy. I love it. And I really can't separate the two of them because I pulled both of them in the same weekend. Mm -hmm. I pulled Rhodos. It was, in fact, they were it was a Valentine's weekend or something like that where they were all on raid up because they were the Valentine's pairs. So it was, they were on ball and raid up for that. I pulled Rodos on a Friday. And then I believe that Saturday I was streaming and it's the first time I ever beat doom tower hard. I beat it live on Twitch. Nice. That's and exciting. the wave that was killing me was the Siffy Rodos wave. So I beat the Siffy Rodos wave somebody donated and said hey use this at some uh, some void shards and those void shards that a viewer bought me got me a siffy oh that's exciting absolutely amazing yeah. so it was just a fun fun experience 
And I mean, Siffy is still a top tier champion to this day. So is Rodos. It opened up so much for me in arena. It opened so much for me in regular content too, because she went on several regular teams. She was great. All the, the frost reduction gave me chances to deal something with Tormin. Uh, Rodos is actually kind of fun to use in a lot of PVE content as well. He's actually pretty good against the Scarab boss, believe it or not. Yep. Rodos is an absolute beast of a champion. And, um, yeah, I mean, I still use both of them to this day. My Rodos is one of the best built champions on my account. So is my Siffy. And uh, just uh, they're everywhere and changed my account. I love them too. And I and I love this because they're a favorite couple of mine. I have, I think I have one Siffy and two Rodos. And so I, I don't even care. Like a lot of times I'll just take the couple with me because I love them. And Siffy in general, I mean, she's she's amazing. I love Siffy in my account too. She's probably one of my favorite cosplays I've ever done as well. So big fan. And that's really, really cool that you ended up pulling the couple like basically like a day apart from each other. I mean, that's some serious yeah, timer luck for sure. Yeah, so awesome. Yeah, love it. And it's, I mean, it's kind of cool too, because I think this is the only couple that you've cosplayed as both of them. I did. I did cosplay as both of them. Yeah, because after I did Siffy, people were like, well, what about Rodos? And I was like, challenge accepted. So I went and cosplayed as Rodos as well. So yeah, you guys will see that in my socials. Those that you guys watch all my stuff, you already know that. But yeah, I have both of them on there. Lots of awesome. fun with them. All right. Yep. So my, my third... Now, my viewers may or may not be shocked by this. We're actually going to stay in the undead. And my my third game changer really has a very, I have a very, very soft spot for him. Very, very deep in my soul for none other than Death Knight. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, um, okay. <laughs> like, why are we going to have Death Knight as a game changer? Hear me out. Listen, I've been a big proponent of Death Knight for a very, very long time. I think he gets a bad rap. He gets a bean on on all those commercials. I mean, the you know, the Poor guy really is like the butt of all the jokes, right? Well, my viewers know that I saw that challenge and basically built a whole bunch of Death Knights, had a Death Knight in a clan boss team. I still have him on a Hydra team. You know, I have Arena. We got 3v3. And lo and behold, I was such a proponent for change for Death Knight that we ended up getting ultimate Death Knight of all champs, right? So basically, we can kind of talk about both of them in some ways, you know, Death Knight and Ultimate Death Knight. And I think Ultimate Death Knight for a lot of people was a game changer. Very similarly to like your time with Arbiter still seeing them in Arena, like you still see Death Knight in Arena like all over the place. And Ultimate Death Knight has so many great spots and so many great uses just in the game. And I mean, look at the hilarity of that. I mean, we still have like the comic the little puns there with him as well too. But I think that Ray did such a great job of taking Death Knight who kind of like is the lovable butt of the joke and then turning him into ultimate death knight who was a really good free champ too really really love that about him yeah i mean he's the ultimate tank in yeah. many scenarios which is unfortunate because several people really don't like him in arena so there's there's a, you know got to do what you got to do with that but yep. he's so utilitarian with the techiness you can do all kinds of things with him he actually can hit pretty hard i've yep. actually been i was talking with uh, i think drock we were talking some arena stuff nuke UDK shows up every once in a while in arena just to throw people off as well. It's something you would not think about doing. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, he actually hits pretty hard. You can build him as a nuke. I think people built him as a solo champion for a yeah. while for early game. You know, very, very good champion. And uh, honestly, an account changer for a lot of people through the end game, actually, because yeah. he's still showing up in high level arena. Yep. Yeah, so he's he's great for sure. So whether we're talking Death Knight, Ultimate Death Knight, love the uh, the duo we have. And I think the Ray joke with it is they're like the daddy-son pair or something like that now, right? They have that whole video about the father-son field trip kind of thing. So definitely, you know, I can't make a video like this without throwing my boy Death Knight a bone on that. So that happens to be our top oh, yeah. three. Do you have any honorable mentions you want to add? Because I know you have a couple different accounts. Um... Probably the one that I want to throw out is just uh, one I one that really changed my account as well would be okay. Leorius. Oh, and okay. Obviously, the lion is absolutely amazing, so it feels like I'm cheating a little bit calling for a Void <laughs> Legendary, but he was also my first Void Legendary. Ooh. And so that's, that's mm -hmm. a huge thing. He also was my first yeah. nuker because I had nobody but Kale for nuking for a long time Oh, as wow. Well. And, I mean, I went to Near Mercy for every single shard early on in my account. Um, and just because I was doing, knew what I was doing with Rector and was able to get as much with her and eventually Sill, yeah. it just took forever to get a legendary of any kind. But Lorius was just an absolute beast and uh, changed 
everything I did in the account. I mean, for a while I used him as a nightmare campaign farmer oh. when I wanted an FR nightmare campaign. I actually used him for solo farming minnow mm -hmm. for a while. So he sped up my minnow for quite a bit. And I still use him in arena to this day. I've actually been whipping him out in live arena pretty regularly recently because nice. uh, he's still a beast. Yep, that's great. I love to see it. I do not have him, but for sure, I can see it to all your points why he would mm -hmm. make such a big difference. I consider he was your first Void Lego you said too. Like, that's a really good pick, a really good scoop up to have that, especially when you basically just had Kale as your nuker. So that's a big yeah, upgrade. Yeah, especially as a, as a low level account, yeah. that unkillable, you know, self preservation is so, so helpful, especially yeah. Ben. I think I had him before I had my Arbiter. Oh so my I gosh. Was often losing speed races because high Katoon, you can only get her so fast and yeah. everything else. So I would still win things because people would try to kill my Alurius and they couldn't. And then he just nuked them and boom, done. Yeah. So I hear that. All right. So my honorable mention I'm going to add was for my alt account is I'm afraid to play alt account. And the honorable mention I'm going to add on there is actually going to be Raglan. So on my, like it was my free to play alt account, definitely struggled on that for quite a bit. Kale was my starter on that one. And on that account, Raglan actually was my first void legendary. And she was, again, a big step up from Shaman. Because again, you know, like when you're starting, you basically just have Shaman, that's all you got. But like her revive, revives an alley with a 75% HP full turn meter, three turns, you could knock that cooldown. So you end up having like a two turn cooldown. So if you make mm -hmm. her fast enough, you know, she's she's popping and reviving quite a bit. So she made a really big difference for me on my alt account. I don't have her on the main, as you see, but she definitely, I'm going to have to throw an honorable mention on that because of my alt. Yeah, I mean, that, that revive is probably the best single target yep. revive other than maybe Ancora, who it also does a reset with similar HP and turn meter. But, you know, for the longest time, it was Raglan and everyone else as far as single target revivers. Yeah. And the two turn cooldown on that isn't even what we're talking about when we're talking about being a good revive. That's just 100% uh, turn meter is huge. So, yep. uh, yeah, I mean, you see, the people right nowadays will say, oh, I don't know if I want Raglan anymore. She's still very useful. Uh -huh. She's got a pretty good kit. She actually doesn't right. need books if you don't want to book her because that uh, revive pretty quick anyway. She's got a cleanse as well. I love using my Raglan still. I've got one and I uh, use her all over the place when yeah. I can. So. And to your point there, too, about people might not necessarily wanting her, we've talked about this before, too, and I feel like champs that are good for accounts are subjective. So depending mm -hmm. on what you have is going to make a difference, whether a champ is really going to make a difference for you versus somebody else. And I think that's something really important to remember, because I do see that kind of often where someone will pull a champ and, you know, they'll they'll be told by like the high end end game people, the champ's not good. But for that person's account, that champ could really be a game changer, and be a big difference. So just being open minded to that and being you know, oh, keeping yeah. that in mind really is important for accounts, especially those of you guys are watching that maybe have like earlier mid accounts, maybe not necessarily end game, is that there's quite a few champs that could probably make a really big difference for you that might not necessarily be game changers for us at the time. Yeah. In fact, if you want to let me sneak one last one in here, of course. too, somebody you guys have talked about one of the cosplay is uh, Aleel. Oh, yeah. I actually really, really like Aleel quite a bit. Yeah, and I, I was surprised. I got him on my alt. I got him probably eight months ago and just sat there with him because I didn't have the books for him. I didn't have anything else. And honestly, the only reason I built him is I was doing a video on gearing champions. Uh -huh. And I said, I should gear a real nuker. Well, Aleel's a real nuker, so let's gear a nuker. And I'll just use him as, here's a nuker. Here's how you gear a nuker. Yep. And I said, you know what? I've got him geared. Let's start using him. That A1 that can steal buffs without being resisted is incredibly huge. The fact that he can hit through mm -hmm. stone skin with that A2 is cool, other than the fact he just doesn't do enough damage to really hurt in most champions, which yeah. is really kind of where that falls apart. But if it's a squishy nuker, you can snipe a squishy nuker and kill him with that without a problem. Uh, it's also good because he puts stone skin on himself, so if he may not be able to kill them but they've been damaged through something else, then he can kill somebody, get stone skin on himself, then he's safe for a round. And then the uh, the fact that he can also put block debuffs or block buffs up on his uh, A3, really, really good. And that passive makes him really, really tanky. So I use him as a secondary nuker in an arena team where I've got a second nuker mm. that hits harder. So he brings more of the damage, 
but uh, and if I use him with Teox, who's obviously a really good champion as well, but Teox gets powered up by having the enemy with debuffs, and since he has three irresistible debuffs that he puts on there pretty easily and hits fairly hard, he basically softens everybody up and then Teox cleans them up. You're talking about the, yeah, the lizard guy, right? Lizard guy, yeah, lizard guy. faction. There yeah. we go. This dude. Yeah, he you looks know, cool and too. yeah, I mean, he'll change the account too. He's a great yep. champion, but I was actually surprised how Allele affected the account, and that's mm. really kind of why we like talking about this stuff. Why I, uh, well, Halo, I love your content and your stories. Is you're not necessarily looking for is this meta? You're looking mm. for can this help my account? Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's really a trap that a lot of people can really fall into. I'm, you know, this champion isn't meta. They're trash. I'm not going to invest in them. Well, sometimes a minimal investment is to gear them six star and maybe run masteries or maybe not. Mm -hmm. But you know what? With gear and six star, you can do an awful lot with a champion, even if they're not great. That's actually true. And then again, yeah, like we're talking about earlier accounts for sure. Mid game accounts can make a huge, like some of these ships can make such a bigger difference than obviously like the end game accounts too. So it really just depends on being open minded and where you're at as well too. Definitely agree with that. And love that you threw in like some of these other ones that we might not necessarily think about because some of these like faction warlord leaders, you know, some people might only consider running them maybe like in faction wars because they obviously get boosted by having all these other ones of the same faction with them. But I like also think outside the box that you're putting in places that aren't necessarily just faction wars because of their utility too. So I love that. Mm-hmm. All right. So guys, that wraps up our... <laughs> some of our game changers. I would love to know who some of your game changers are. Make sure you drop us some comments down below. You know, whether it's your main account, your alt account, whether you spend lots of money in the game, whether you're free to play in the middle, whatever it is. And also, again, I will have some links down below for Bronze, for his Twitch and for his YouTube. So make sure you go hit the follow button, hit the subscribe form, check out the video we did together. And Bronze, did you have anything you want to share? Like, do you have any upcoming new series, anything exciting coming up? Or what are you doing over the weekend? You know, got anything you want to share with our viewers well like i said i usually stream on saturday so that's always fun and okay. in fact i often raid into you so if you want to hop on twitch on saturday um i'll be usually streaming till three or four central time she's usually starting around four eastern time or mm-hmm. four central time somewhere around there so uh check us both out on twitch yep good stuff and broad thank you again so much for having me i'm glad that we were oh. able to do this together guys drop us some comments down below and i'm sure we'll do another collab in the future so we'll see you in the next video Bye, guys. Bye.